Hey everyone, me again. So recently I picked up this foundation from Revolution. This is their new Conceal and Hydrate foundation. I've just done a dedicated review on this. If you haven't already seen it, I'll link it above. And this is kind of a part two to that video because I thought it would be interesting to wear this side by side and compare it to the previous foundation which is their Conceal and Define. So this launched about a year ago and I've got to be honest this isn't one that I reach for a lot just because I find it a little bit drying on me. In fact it's been so long since I've put this on that I can't really remember what I think of it so it's going to be really interesting to try it again today. But when they launched their Conceal and Hydrate they were saying that it's kind of like the Conceal and Define but more suitable for dry skin. So I just want to wear both of them on either side of my face and see how they apply, how they look on the skin and I can also do a bit of a wear test and just see how they wear during the day as well. Just for reference I have dry skin I'm sure you can see that I do have a bit of redness as well. I'm also prone to breakouts along my chin because my ovaries are trying to kill me. I don't have a massive problem with things like skin texture. I also don't have any problems usually with oiliness during the day. My foundations don't tend to break down but that being said because I tend to layer foundations so much to cover my skin redness I do tend to set them with a powder and a setting spray. Oh and my shade is usually F1 in the Revolution shade range. So I've already done my skincare this morning. I put it on about half an hour ago so it's kind of had a chance to sink in a little bit but there's still a little bit of kind of moisture on the surface of my skin as well. I am going to prime my skin, which I always do every single time I put on makeup. I really like using oil primers, so I go back and forth between the Revolution Baking Oil and this one that I'm using at the moment. This is the Gold Elixir Rosehip Seed Oil. I'm going to start out with the Conceal and Define foundation and I'm going to put it on this side of my face. Like I said, it's been a really long time since I've actually worn this, so it will be really interesting just to remember what I think of it. Before I even get started, there is a difference in the packaging. So the Conceal and Define comes with a giant doe foot applicator. And I remember thinking at the time that it launched that that was a very unusual choice. It wasn't something that I personally liked. I know some people really do like it because it just makes it so quick to just throw on the product. For me, I just found that with the doe foot applicator, I was just applying far too much product all the time. And usually if I'm wearing a foundation that's quite full coverage, like these two are, I'll usually just want to wear like a little bit and shear it out and then keep building it up where I need it. So when the Conceal and Hydrate foundation launched, I did actually include a pump, which is really, really good. Personally, I always prefer a pump in my foundation. I think if I apply it with the Doe for applicator today, it's going to be really difficult to try and get the same amount of product on both sides of my face. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to get it straight off the doe foot and put it on the back of my hand like this and then to apply both the foundations I've got two flat foundation brushes and two sponges so I'm going to start by just putting the product on my face with the flat foundation brush and then use the sponge to actually blend it into the skin. That was like the most fair way that I could think of to test the foundations. So I'm just going to start off with about two or three stripes I remember this being quite full coverage, so I'm just going to start out with less product and build it up if I need to. And then I'm just going to build it up a little bit more. Feels like it's setting very, very quickly on my skin. I do remember when I used to try wearing this, I didn't set it with powder, which is very unusual for me, but just because it felt like it was setting so much by itself that I wasn't sure if I needed to. So this is what the Conceal and Define foundation is looking like so far. At this point it does look quite natural. I do want to build it up a little bit more and just cover up as much redness as I possibly can. So far I don't have any issues with texture or anything like that either, which is very unusual for me when using a matte foundation like this one. I am finding that I'm getting through quite a bit of product, but you know, that's usually the case with most foundations for me anyway. The coverage is amazing. Like I forgot how good the coverage is. You can see that it's really just completely evened out my skin redness and my face matches my neck a lot better. I'm just going to build it up a bit more now, taking it directly in the product. I don't really want to wear any concealer today. I just want to cover up as much as I can with the foundation so that we can see exactly what it covers. It's very buildable, which I like. I'm having no issues adding more thin layers of product where I need to. Under my eyes, it's not looking the best. It's really kind of 
emphasizing the fine lines that I have. And then I'm just gonna get a small brush and get whatever's left of the product and just try to use it like I would a concealer. So I've managed to build up some really impressive coverage out of this, especially considering I haven't used any concealer at all. It's probably one of the more forgiving matte foundations I own. Like usually I don't wear a lot of matte foundation, I have dry skin, it's just never a good look. But this one isn't too bad. So I'm just going to apply the conceal and hydrate on the other side. And I'm going to swap over my sponge as well. This is actually the same sponge. It's from AOA. It's just a newer sponge. That's why it looks a bit more pink. But the sponge itself is the same. I don't think I need to top up the primer. It's just kind of been sat on my face. It hasn't really sunk in or anything. So I think we're good to go. So I'm just going to get a few pumps of this. And straight away I can see that it's a lot more runny than the Conceal and Define foundation. So I had a feeling when I was reviewing the Conceal and Hydrate foundation that it just looked a little bit darker than the other Revolution F1 foundations. And I think it maybe does just look a little smidge darker, but I can definitely get away with it, it's absolutely fine. The coverage is still really amazing and I feel like the product's actually going a bit further. So straight away I can see that this side has a lot more glow going on. The coverage is still really good but I do feel like I'm gonna have to layer it a bit more on my redness on this side than I did on this side. Yeah, it really does look a lot more glowy to me. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera, but this side has a lot more shine going on. So I'm just going to keep building it up like I did on the other side. I'm trying to get like an even-ish amount of foundation on both sides of my face. This side definitely looks a bit darker, doesn't it? Hopefully you can see that on camera. I did say in my review for the Conceal and Hydrate, if you're like torn between two shades, I would definitely get the lighter one. Or if you're normally between two shades in the Revolution shade range, I would just go for the lighter one. Like I can get away with this, but I'm very tempted to try the shade below, which I think is F. 0.7. I have that shade in the concealer and that one looks really nice. This one's building up perfectly fine as well. I'm getting a really good coverage out of this. I'm really happy with the amount of coverage I'm getting. It's maybe not as easy to build as conceal and define just because I find that if the foundation just kind of sets a little bit, if it goes a little bit more satin, a bit more matte, it's much easier to build once it's a bit drier. But if something is quite wet and quite glowy, quite dewy, I find that it's really difficult to build it up or sometimes you have to powder in between building it up or just let it set on the skin a little bit and then go back to it. I'm just going to put a bit more foundation on the conceal and hydrate side because I feel like I put a bit more foundation on the other side. When I'm putting on foundation by the way, I tend to work in layers. I'm sure you've already gathered that because that's what I've been doing this entire time. But yeah, I don't ever just put on one thick layer of foundation. Of course it takes significantly longer to do it this way, but that's just what I've been doing for years and I really, really like the way it looks. Okay, I feel like that's as much as I can build it up on the conceal and hydrate side. I'm just going to try doing the concealer trick with a smaller brush. This is a different brush that I was using for the other side. So I feel like this is the best coverage that I'm going to get on both sides of my face. So I'm going to turn down the lights and come a little bit closer and then we can see really up close just how both the foundations are looking. So unsurprisingly, this side of my face where I used conceal and define is definitely looking a lot more matte. Again, I'm quite surprised that it's still fairly forgiving on my skin, especially considering how dry my skin is. I would definitely recommend using an oil primer though, if you are using this foundation with dry skin. That will just really help you out. This side of my face is still looking a little bit wet, a little bit dewy. It doesn't really set in the same way that the Conceal and Define side does. Like, I could probably get away without powdering this side of my face, but this side I definitely definitely need to powder. It's quite wet to the touch. Like I'm wearing fake nails for this video and whenever I kind of touch my face I can see a little mark on there. That's not a problem for me because I always powder and use setting spray but if that's not really part of your routine then maybe this might not be the right foundation for you. You can see both sides do not look good around the eye area. I'll try and look down so that you can see, but they're both really, really creasing, especially around the lid. I should mention though that I'm 29. Most foundations just don't look good around the eye area anymore. 
I don't really have like a massive problem with skin texture, but I definitely have some, especially on my forehead where my skin is a little bit drier. I'd say at the moment, the Conceal and Hydrate foundation is actually looking a little bit worse for skin texture, which surprises me. But it's just because it's so wet and it's so glowy, it's kind of highlighting my skin texture. But yeah, maybe that won't be as much of an issue as it starts to set. Anyway, I'm going to jump off for a bit and finish the rest of my makeup. I won't be doing anything too adventurous today, because it's Saturday and I have no intention of leaving the house. I'll be right back. So as you can see, my makeup is done now and from a distance, it doesn't really look like I'm wearing two different foundations, but you can definitely see some minor differences once you look a bit closer. I should mention, by the way, that I'm not wearing concealer. So what you see here is just the foundation on its own. And I think for just a foundation, this is absolutely fine. I've just set my face with the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder, and I've also used some of the Revolution Pro Fix Fixing Spray as well. That's kind of my usual combination at the moment. The conceal and Define side is looking a lot drier especially where I do just have some dryness just along here where I've also put a bit of highlighter on as well and I can definitely see that there's a bit more coverage on this side of my face as well which I expected. On the conceal and hydrate side it's not covering my redness and my blemishes quite as well. There is still a little bit of a glow to my skin on the conceal and hydrate side even though I have set my face now. I really like it. I think that looks quite flattering on me with my dry skin. When I was putting the rest of my face on I did notice that my nose didn't look very good on either side of my face but in a different way so like on this side it looked like it was getting some little tiny holes in there and then on this side it was just kind of creasing and breaking away both sides did look like there was quite a lot of creasing around my eyes which again i expect i'd say they're both creasing a little bit now obviously the conceal and define side it does just all look that little bit drier things are looking a little bit dry around my chin Again, that happens a lot. Both foundations are actually looking a little bit textured on that area. And it is kind of emphasizing some dryness on my forehead as well and just kind of in between the brows right here. So yeah, you can see for yourself that both foundations have their pros and cons. This side is a lot more dewy, it's a lot more forgiving, but you don't get that same level of coverage. This side with the conceal and define, you do get more coverage. But if you've got dry skin like me, it might not look as flattering. Personally, I think this amount of coverage is more than enough in my foundation. So the Conceal and Hydrate is still my favourite out of the two at this point. But this is just on first application. My plan is to come and do a few check-ins during the day. So the time is five past one in the afternoon. Don't judge me. It's Saturday. I had a lion. So I'll come back mid-afternoon and I'll also come back this evening before I take my makeup off as well. And I'll check in with you guys later. Hey guys, so it's just gone four o'clock in the afternoon which means I've had both these foundations on for the last three hours. There's definitely signs of wear but it's just looking a little bit different on both sides of my face, kind of what you would expect for a more matte foundation versus a more dewy foundation, mostly around my chin because I've had lunch and again around my nose is becoming a problem on both sides of my face and the under eye area on both sides of my face doesn't look good either and I feel like there are some areas especially where I've tried to use the foundation as concealer where it's kind of looking a little bit textured in that area now. But yeah even though it is a little bit on the dry side conceal and define actually looks a lot better than I remember it looking on my skin. Like, I remembered it being a bit more matte than this, and maybe not quite as forgiving. So maybe I wasn't having a good skin day when I last wore Conceal and Define. Or maybe it just works better with the oil primer that I use at the moment. Um, with the Conceal and Define side, I don't feel like I need concealer at all. I think I could get away with just using the foundation. On the Conceal and Hydrate side, I do feel like I would normally want to use a bit of concealer over here, especially just around the redness at the bottom of my face and around the blemishes and a bit under the eyes as well. The foundation has held up a little bit better on this side in my opinion. I like both sides, I think both sides of my face would work for different occasions. If I did need to wear my makeup for the entire day, I'd probably want to go for conceal and define, but if I wanted the more everyday option that's when I would like conceal and hydrate that little bit more. So yeah, I think that kind of sums everything up so far. I will come back this evening before I take my makeup off just to show you how it's worn during the day and I'll see you guys then. So it's coming up to half past seven in the evening now, which means I've had both foundations on for 
roughly six and a half hours. And frankly, I feel like that's long enough. <laughs> my skin is starting to get a little bit like bored of having foundation on. You know when you just get to that point where you just want to start scratching your face? Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So the interesting thing is both foundations definitely have signs of wear. I mean, of course they do. It's been six and a half hours. It's not going to get any better after this point, is it? So both of them do have signs of wear, but they're kind of wearing in different ways and they look worse in different areas of my face, which I just feel like is really interesting. I don't think either of them look like really, really bad. It's just that they both look different. So on the side with Conceal and Define, there's definitely a little bit of gathering around the creases. Their product has broken down quite a bit around my nose. I was not expecting it to break down quite as much as it did, especially around this bit of my face right here, just underneath my eyes next to my nose. And that's really unusual for me. That's usually an area where my skin is quite dry. I don't tend to get oily right there. I get oily maybe a little bit on my nose, but not massively. There's still quite a lot of dryness showing in this area here, which is also surprising. I really thought that, that would have like broken down a bit more by this point, that my natural oils would have started to come through a little bit and just helped it look a bit softer on the skin, but that just hasn't happened. And there's definitely some texture around just my chin over here where my spots are, but that's also happened on the other side as well. So both foundations have done that. And I noticed that the conceal and hydrate side has definitely worn away a little bit more around the kind of mouth and chin area. So like where I tried to use it as a concealer, you know, that's just completely gone. It's kind of fading away over here around where my smile lines are. So this doesn't happen with any other foundation apart from this one. And my forehead is looking a lot more oily on the side with the conceal and hydrate. But on the actual like cheek area where I don't have any creases or anything like that, I do like the way that this foundation looks a little bit more. And underneath my eyes, I do think the conceal and hydrate one is the winner as well. Neither of them look great if I'm honest, but the Conceal and Hydrate looks a little bit better under my eyes than Conceal and Define. I feel like this side is a little bit more flattering on my dry skin. I don't think either side of my face looks bad. I think they've both done really well. I think they are a lot more different than I thought they would be when the Conceal and Hydrate foundation first launched. I feel like they are quite different foundations. I feel like the formulas are very, very different. Personally, with my dry skin, I can imagine reaching for the Conceal and Hydrate that little bit more. However, doing this video has made me realize that the Conceal and Define actually works a little bit better than I remember it working. And yeah, I might reach for this a little bit more in the future as well, or I might mix the two together. I'm sure everyone watching this is going to have a different preference. I think if you're oilier, if you need your makeup to last a bit longer, if you've got more that you need to cover, or you just want a concealer and a foundation in one product, you'll probably like conceal and define whereas if you want something a little bit dewier a little bit healthier more radiant more forgiving in general or you just have the driest skin in the world you'll probably much prefer the conceal and hydrate anyway i hope this video has been helpful if you have any questions about either foundation just let me know in the comments below and i'll get back to you down there and let me know if you want me to do any more videos like this i've had a lot of fun trying two different products side by side and i'd really be up for doing more videos like this so let me know if there are any other products you'd like me to compare, they don't have to be foundations. But I do have a couple of ideas for some more foundation videos like this. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. And make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more from me. I upload a new video at least once a week, sometimes twice whenever I can. I also have a blog and an Instagram. I'll leave all the links for that good stuff down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!